Hello everybody, my name is Petr Koutny and welcome back in another YouTube chess training video and I hope you will enjoy second time and for the last time this video with Richard Tal and his examples and you know nearly everybody everywhere loves his games, his moves, his ideas so I believe you will enjoy this video and we are starting with position number one you are right exactly as Michal Tal was in 1974 and I will ask you if you are able to spot the best setups and best plan for white and if yes, well done. If no, don't worry. The most important is experience, the most important is training and the most important is to understand how to play chess and I will do my best to show you how to improve your chess. So if you don't mind, stop this video for a few minutes and ask yourself what do you think is the best setup for white and his army and then come back and of course I believe you did and I believe you have the answers and now it's the best time to check your answers. So the best way how to play this game is to exchange these two pieces. Then of course you can see that this knight is the biggest defender of two most important squares in this game and I'm speaking about d5 and e4 and that's exactly what we wish to play. We wish to see this bishop on d5 and this knight on e4 and for these reasons White is going to exchange his bishop for knight and he wish to try a win or he wish to fight over these two important squares and just watch this game because I believe this is a typical chess plan. This is a typical uh, chess position and it's good to know it. So, the first Michal Tal took. Now check on uh, d5 and see exactly he played these two first moves as he believed. He believed that this is the best setup of his pieces because, you know, this bishop is so strong. This knight is is in the best position because he's going to attack weak pawn on d6, he's going to attack bishop on f6 and even in this position white has uh, black has two bishops I don't believe that a dark squares bishop is not any hero and I believe that this is a bad bishop with not a great future so this is really exactly way how to play chess to think about how you wish to set up your pieces understand why and maybe to know some good examples and uh, just thanks to Michatal we have chance to know how to play this position okay I believe that the next plan will, will be to play f4 then to take this uh, bishop and of course you can see that uh, this diagonal is weak or should be weak if there is no dark square bishop so that's another plan so we are going for safe place for our king then we are playing f4 we are going to take on f6 and we have another weakness you can see that the biggest weakness in black's territory is this line and you know what's the best plan is every time to attack opponent weaknesses so if you know where black is weak just go there and you can see that our advantage is bigger and bigger is uh, really increasing only because we know the best plan you know Black looks like is in a defense. Black looks like he's really in bad position, and you know what to play now to take on f4. And the different maybe one day will be that uh, these two pieces or these three pieces should be exchanging. But this bishop, that's the biggest difference in this diagram uh, in this game. White has a really strong d5 bishop. Black has not so strong d7 bishop and for this reason he is going for c6. It's not a bad move, of course it's a good move because if we are black and if we wish to exchange our bad pieces, it's the best way to do immediately. Just do now, not later because you have to use your time, you have to use your chance and just go for exchanging where you have bad piece against your opponent's good one and that's the best plan for black and he is going for exchanging of these pieces okay it's only now this position is interesting and somewhere here will be difficult for black to change this position you know 
uh, this pin is so strong that uh, White will have uh, two, three more more moves, and I believe he will play b4, a5, a5, b5, a5, and he will try to go for a winning end game. And now maybe this is the best time. You know, a strong player is every time thinking about if he has any chance to go for a good end game. And I do believe that this end game should be interesting for White. So, okay, before, as I told you, White is preparing end game. Take, take, and a4. Uh, White won two moves. And now white is winning because these two extra moves are um, too much for black to play this position. So b6 and of course uh, white is winning because white will win all, nearly all black's pawns. What was interesting in this position? So if we know how to set up this position, if we know that in this position we have only two or three plans. The first plan is to take this knight because we wish to win fight over these two important squares. Then we are playing f4. This move f4 is really important. And then we should try to fight over these dark squares. We believe that these dark squares should be weak. And uh, the last information what I love in this position it was like if we have a chance to go for an interesting endgame, just do it. Just go there and you know if we are winning in the middle game, it's the same winning as we are winning in end game. So why not to win this game without problems? And you can see that now we can win one move with move B4. Uh, black nothing change. We are playing a4 and now of course We can take 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 and this end game is simply won for a white I believe that you enjoyed this position and uh, It's the right time to go for another one. You are white. You are tall. So enjoy this position I hope you will have the right feeling how to play this position. So once again, I will ask you to stop this video, to think uh, a lot about this position and just to think how you should play this position. The most important question is how you will set up your pieces in the right direction, in the best plan. So it's your time, it's your move and just do your best. And if you did, I do believe that the biggest weakness is okay I will ask you where do you think is the blacks biggest weakness I believe it's this pawn and if we have chance to go with this knight to b3 with this knight to c4 you can see that both knights will going attack really the biggest weakness on a5 it's no doubt and it's not question that if we will win this pawn we have more material, we have more pawns and we are in the best way how to win this game. So with more material, everybody should won or win our games. So um, for this reason, White started uh, this plan and he went to c4. Another move should be to uh, he went to b3 and another move should be to b, uh, c4. For this reason, Black is playing d5 and he wished to stop him to play move to c4, knight to c4. But what's a mistake or what's a difference between move when black has a pawn on d6 and when black has pawn on d5? I hope you see the difference and I will show you where is the difference. And the difference is, yes, is uh, this square. So, c5 in this position is not weak and in this position c5 is really weak square and you know even if we are white and we are not winning a5 pawn we are winning another weakness and you know it's a great uh, chance to see or to spot weaknesses and to understand that now is weak now is not weak so after d5 of course uh, the right plan is to attack opponent weaknesses and you can see that this knight is really the best piece of all white species because he's going to attack a uh, rook bishop one day this pawn is taking this square and this is a really super super strong uh, knight and 
it's only because move d5. Okay, now we have one piece which is doing nothing, so is it the best time to go to open file? Every time if you are watching to your chess game or to your diagrams and if you will see open file, think that your rook loves this open file and go there. Okay, exchange, why not? And uh, even here, even here, uh, white took on b7, still uh, the biggest weakness is on a5. So I will ask you if you are able to attack this weakness. And because you have only two pieces, you have attacked this weakness twice. And you have only two pieces, so I believe that this rook will go to... I am asking you if you are able to spot the best square for this rook. I believe it's on c5 because from c5 you are going to attack a5 and this knight of course will go to b3 and you can see that from the first moves of this example maybe till end the biggest problem for black is weakness. If you are able to spot weakness, if you are able to attack opponent weaknesses you are a really improving chess player and this is the best way how to go forward, how to play better chess, how to understand chess, how to make plan and you know how to have fun with chess. So white attack a5 and now attack one more time a5. Looks like black is lost because you know yes uh, we will win this pawn then we should win this pawn and we have more material and we have a really big advantage so of course now is this threat on or threat to go to c2 we don't need to be hurry just stop your opponent threats take material and you can take more material at the end you know, this is another difficult endgame for white. You have a strong A4 pawn, you have a really strong rook, and all together, of course, you are winning. Take, take, G4, take, B3, and A6, and you know, it's game over for black. Everything started, and this is a really interesting position with the square a5. Uh, a5 pawn is a really bigger weakness and you know maybe if black has the dark square the bishop this weakness is not so weak but in, in this position he doesn't have dark square bishop and with the right plan which is usually to attack opponent weaknesses you should know that this is the best direction the best plan and I believe that you have feeling that this game was not difficult, that we are able to understand nearly move by move and you know nearly all white moves are making sense at and that's beautiful that now we understand that white has to go to c5 and attack on a5. Now of course check, now we have to go c4 or b4 and we have to attack a5 and if we manage to attack twice uh, only last move is going for center to support our knight and now we have more material we are winning a weakness and well done we have the feeling that we understand this position we have the right feeling that we are improving chess player and you know we are the right feeling that we should play nearly like Michal Tal and I'm going to show another example so what do you think is the best plan for white in this position? You have only two or three pieces so it's not difficult to make a plan. You know in the middle game it's much more difficult when you have all pieces. So now it's uh, so simple and that's uh, my advice to leader end games because in end games you should know what to play, you should build a plan and you know it's not so difficult. So where black has weaknesses. I believe that on f7 is weakness, so how we can attack this weakness? I believe that we should go to f3 and from f3 we should attack this weakness. Okay, what we have to do with this piece? Okay, we have to use another weakness and black's another weakness 
is our B5 pawn. Yes, it's not a weakness exactly as you think that weakness looks like, but you know, if you have something strong, that means it should be our opponent weakness. So we have to support this B5 pawn. One day we should go to B6, and you know, two weaknesses is the best way for your winning end game. And that's exactly played Michal Tal. That's maybe exactly the way how Michal Tal was thinking and um, how Michal Tal spent his time in this game. So, rook to a5. Okay, we see that uh, this b5 pawn is under attack. It's under attack twice. So, it's important to, to invest time to go there and have a time for move to b4. When we will be on b4, we have another time to go back and we should attack another weakness. And uh, believe me or not, if you are able to attack two weaknesses, you are a really a strong chess master. So, okay, we are going to b4. Now, if I will ask you, what do you think white played? And I do believe that you will tell me, of course, it's not so difficult because we have to attack another weakness. And the biggest weakness now, what we are able to spot or what we are able to see is F7 pawn. And you know, then everything is so simple. One move, another move, and we are attacking another weaknesses. Okay, now what to play? Maybe we see that it's a big threat just to lose this bishop so for this reason we should play b3 and okay black think that he should exchange these rooks okay why not i believe that this end game is one for white at least we have more material and we have um, not now great bishops but if we will play good moves we should improve it so b6 why not now our moves should be check here or going here, attack um, these pawns from somewhere, somehow, and you know it's a really bad, bad game for uh, black. This knight is lost. You can see that this bishop now is much more stronger than this knight because everywhere where this knight will jump, nearly will be exchanged. So f3. Why not to take another pawn? So thank you. Every time we can attack opponent weaknesses, take, just go back and F3 and in this position black understands that is lost and he resigned. So again in this position is really interesting to see that Michal Tal play, uh, played move to B4 then is going to attack another weakness and looks like he understands what he's playing. Looks like he has a plan and looks like that is a really great, great uh, um, idea to learn from chess masters. And I believe that you are enjoying this video. I hope it, that uh, you are following our YouTube chess channel. And I do believe that this, ex this example where you are black uh, you will find the best answers. So, what do you think is the best setup for black in this position? Anyway, this is game from 1981 and I hope you will enjoy it. So, of course, every time it's good to understand that the knight is going to d6. It's very important to not, not, let, uh, uh, to not let go this uh, pawn forward and uh, we have to stop him immediately and not tomorrow, not later, immediately. So the best plan is to go with uh, this piece to f6 and with knight to d6. That's the first important plan and then we can check what's happened. We have to see or we have to watch how white will play this game, but we have planned for two moves. Okay, it's done and now because uh, we are watching Michal Tal's game, we should not be surprised of move c4. c4 is interesting because you can see that if nothing is going wrong, we have b4 pawn and this pawn is only three moves from our victory, so why not? And just this game is going for interesting, uh, interesting threats 
and at the end you can see that it's a threat to check on F3 or maybe to take on a C6 and white went to position where black will have a knight with a queen against a white bishop and you know the old story is speaking that these two pieces are much more stronger than these two pieces and just don't be surprised if black is winning because he has the right pieces so remember that it's advantage to have a knight and queen than um, the note. So uh, we are going for checkmate. Check, 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 and next moves is checkmate. And for this reason, white resign. Okay, what was interesting here? Interesting here is to, to see the right setup. Knight belong under pawn, and then we have to see or we have to watch what's our opponent's moves and i hope you are still watching this video because uh, we are in another example you are white and what do you think is the most important um, informations from uh, from this diagram how to how to play this position if we are white and uh, once again just stop this video i think you think a while and come back i hope you see that uh, this game is about space um, Black wished to play one day d5 and he wished to fight uh, and to win back some space, some squares and um, White's plan is to not allow uh, just to lose any space, any square and the best plan is for one day to play of course e4, f4, maybe e5 and you know just watch how important is the space in this game don't worry if you are not able to find the best moves or best plans if I am open I have difficulties to find the best plans but at least uh, I know after I saw this example how to play this position I will do my best to remember as, as many as I can as much as I can and I do believe that one day I will have something similar in my chess game and I will remember how to play and I, be, I will play like Michal Tal. So maybe the best time is to go with two rooks to C file now e4 and as I, as I told you it's important to not let black play d5 and that's it exactly in this position e5 looks good and the best way is to go to g4 because black should play f6 immediately because if black will not play f6 as was played in this game you can see that the space is really really important and you know without space black pieces are in bad positions they are in defense they are in loss somewhere of nowhere and it's not difficult for white to improve his position and when white will think that he improved everything and is the best time to open a position he, he should play move c5 and c5 was played uh, immediately just now and you know after c5 um, white is getting a bigger and bigger advantage and it's difficult for black to play with this knight with when this knight has no any squares so looks like now um, black is playing without knight this bishop has uh, no good squares and it looks like this bishop is another bad piece and looks these two rooks these two rooks are um, like attacking c5 but c5 is not a weakness if c5 is advantage for white so if you will check who, who has got a good pieces and which side has bad pieces i believe that you understand that white has advantage or maybe big advantage and um, after c6 take take uh, we are in another position what do you think is the best plan for white in this position of course it's a difficult to see or to think that we should win our game with only one plan 
Of course, uh, we have to be flexible and we know that uh, every situation is going to be changed. But we know that if we are able to spot a new weakness, we have to attack. So, I will ask you if you are able to see new, maybe the biggest weakness in black territory. So, what do you think? Where you, you wish to attack? What you wish to attack? Of course, this pawn is weak and it's the best time to attack this pawn. So, we are going to, to attack uh, with the rook. We are going to attack with one more piece and you should see that, you know, well, games looks like it's going um, like in ordinary way, but in one day when Michal Tau is, uh, is sure where black has weakness, he's going to attack this weakness. So, one rook, one bishop, one knight is attacking and there's not a surprise that black is losing material and okay. If we have more material, we know that we are playing for win and we are improving our chess games and you can see that even here strong knight, very bad bishop, strong rook, very bad rook, strong piece, bad piece and uh, with more material I understand that the black resign. This example I believe was interesting because it first looks like uh, the most important um, way how to play this game is a space. And a space is advantage. Space is advantage and you know space is a chance to wait for our opponent's moves and it's difficult for black to play this position because without space is a it's really difficult to play with all pieces and you can see or you should have feeling that something is wrong with black pieces and they are in bad position, they are without air, they are you know lost somewhere of nowhere and uh, okay in this move d6 we are going to take because we know that there is a new weakness on e6 and new weakness mean a new target, new target to attack and to attack with all our army. So, with the rook, with the knight, rook and uh, d5 bishop and at the end we have more material. Not hard game, I believe that we understand all moves and for this reason we are in another example. Maybe another typical example. You are white, you are playing as Michal Tal and what do you think is the best plan for white in this position? I believe that this position should be uh, like uh, another typical position where white has advantage with great knight against bad bishop and it's uh, really important to improve this knight for the best squares and if you manage to improve this knight for the best squares, well done, you are improving chess player. If not, never mind, don't worry, take it easy because, you know, we wish to learn, we wish to improve and maybe when we will see this example, we will improve. And the best moves are g5 and this knight is going here from this square and we will attack weak square f6, weak square a6 and maybe another plan will be uh, e5. So from this square we are going to support move e5 and you know maybe here it's uh, difficult to to see how to play this position. Maybe here it's not too difficult to see how we will play this position if we have a knight on uh, g4 and you know Mikhatal played exactly a4 just because is making space and uh, he know that this knight will be superstar on g4 and two moves and we are there my friends we are there and you know it looks like this knight is a really stronger than bishop and now with move e5 it's very difficult to take this pawn uh, i will show variation if uh, black will take this um, Pawn. We are going to increase our activity. We are going to attack f7. 
maybe black will exchange okay we are playing check and take b7 knight on f6 is a monster rook on b7 is another great piece maybe we have a threat to go with another rook to d7 we should attack weakness on f7 another weakness on a7 and of course uh, this weakness is waiting for us so i believe that this position is simple position and for this reason black went bishop to um, g7 check take take and you know it's not difficult to win this game we have more material we have a really great um, pawn formation or we have a uh, strong all our um, army on open d file so we, we should took and we are going to improve we are going to take another squares and at the end white is going for another victory i love these examples where we have chance to watch michael task games you know these games are with energy with love and you know that's chess which i i really love to see i want to play like michael Tal. And it looks so simple if we know the plan. If we know that we have to play g5 because we want to go for knight to g4, so simple. And now move e5, it's nearly winning moves for white. It's difficult to play uh, for black this position. And you know, just uh, remember these types of positions. I believe that uh, this experience will be your friend. In your chess games at least you should change your uh, your your games because you, you should think how to play with all your pieces you should think how to improve your position I believe that now we are trying to watch where our opponent has weaknesses and you know that's the best way how to improve our games another example you are white. This is game between Tal and Portish uh, from or since 1988. And what do you think is the best plan in this position? In this position, it's very important to think how white will improve these two pieces. Where do you think this knight will be a strong knight? Because now it looks like this knight is doing nothing on a2. And the same story is about bishop on a3. So how to improve these two pieces? And if your plan is starting in with this question, oh well done, you are improving chess player. So I do believe that this knight will go to g3, a4. And the difference between knight on e2 and e4 is so big and so great that if you have the same feeling that uh, knight on e4 is a really superstar and is going for your advantage great this bishop i believe is belong here this diagonal is so strong diagonal so if we see that this diagonal is a really great just go for that and you can take this diagonal and of course you are starting with move e5 because with move e5 you are making space for knight and you are taking this open line so looks like it's so simple of course uh, black will not take because he will lose knight on d7 and altogether uh, this plan is working but it's not important that this plan is working it's important that um, we know that we have to play with all our pieces and we improve the bishop we are going to improve knight one two and we are playing c4 and you can see how this position this position change strong knight strong bishop bad knight bad bishop maybe not safe save rooks on e6 and this rook is doing nothing this piece is doing nothing you know big big advantage and i believe that uh, white has big advantage now he's going to attack on h7 of course this this bishop is going to attack g7 and you know if Mikhatal is in attack 
and it's very hard to stop him. So another weakness is on f7. Uh, take take. So now we see another two weaknesses. You should see another weakness, and uh, you know why not to go for this type of positions and uh, just take take. And at the end, h4, h5, h6, another big threat. So extra material, extra material, and check they take and big threat is to go to g3 and it's so big threat that black resign i hope you enjoy this position because it makes a sense that in this position it's really important to improve these two pieces and if you will improve your two bad pieces you will improve not only your position but what's more you will improve yourself and that's the most important information for us. Okay, I think the last example. I hope you are enjoying this video and I believe you are improving chess player. What do you think? How white should win this game? What's the best plan for white? How to break black's defense? And you know, we have to play f4, e5, but for this reason, this rook be, uh, need to go to e1 and we have to go to d3 because if we are on d3 then we can play f4 because now if we are playing f4 of course it's a bad mistake so all together we have to have plan for this rook for this piece and just watch this game enjoy the chess because chess is a beautiful game and f4 of course if now black will take is going to lose on check on h8 and e8 so not good way to take it one more time not good time to take it we are on d3 we are on e1 playing e5 and it's game over uh, because now is uh, of course activity is so strong that check f6 and check and black resign Okay, but more time with good plan, you are able to change yourself, you are able to change um, your um, chess style and you know, I, I am very uh, happy that we have the chance to watch uh, Michal Town's games. It was the second part last time we spoke about Michal Town in these uh, videos and I do believe that uh, you enjoyed, I do believe that you improved and I hope I will see you here next time with another YouTube chess training video and if you like it just follow our YouTube chess channel. Thank you very much and I hope I will see you soon next time. Bye bye.